Podor. Travel and wine. What could be better? For the first time on Ukrainian television, we combine those two things into a unique project. A famous TV presenter and a well-known sommelier begin an unprecedented journey around the world. I saw you and got confused. I am excited. Where are we? Where are we going? How many times have we turned? You will see the whole process of winemaking. I have never seen that much foam in my life. From the vine that warms up in the sunlight in the vineyard, to bottled wine on store shelves. You will learn the secrets of how to distinguish true wine from fakes and how to choose the best wine. How to pour wine correctly. I don't tell anyone. Only at school at the third level. A cunning man, huh? <laughs> and you will be able to get an unbelievable prize yourself. Those who watch this episode must remember the password. Remember it precisely. But the first to come to the winery we visit in this episode, say the password and win the special prize. My heart is sinking. So are you ready to see the world through wine? According to a legend, this is the place where Zeus used banish Dionysius for his love of wine and partying. However, Dionysius took a grapevine along with him. What a smart move! Nowadays, this land looks like a grape paradise. The view is fantastic. Yeah. Believe it or not, this is neither Italy nor France nor even Spain. This is our Ukraine, Transcarpathia. Though Hungary begins over there, not far from here. And right here, we have incredible vineyards, and today we'll be talking about them. Hi! Hey. Do we have to kiss twice? No, in Italy they'd be kissing you till the lips fell off. Really? That's more than twice. Twice, at the very least. We will find out next yeah. time we're in Italy. Do you like it here? It's so beautiful here, can't have enough of it. Every time I look at these fine vineyards of my country, can't believe my eyes. Makes you want to just sit here with a bottle of wine and enjoy the view. By the way, where is the bottle of wine? How come you didn't bring one? I'll go pick a few wines for the tasting. Okay, and I'll go searching for some stories then. See you later. See ya. This is Berehovo. There are two theories on the origin of its name. One says that a shepherd named Saz was tending his bulls and found a treasure trove. He was so happy that built a town called Berek Saz, that is the shore of Saz. The other goes that it was named after the beautiful riverside. Vitaly has gone about his business, but I'll be all right here in Berekovo because, first of all, it is so beautiful here. This is an army's officer's casino and over there, a bridge of love. By the way, Berehova is a town of seven bridges. One, two, three, four, five, and there are definitely another two. This is a bridge of love, which, like any other bridge of love, is hung with such small locks. Saratek in Hungarian means, I love you. You think it's Italy and France that are making the history wine? Well, that would be correct. But everyone in Transcarpathia knows that in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the wine-making culture emerged back in the 13th century. The owners of these vineyards lovingly keep this culture alive. It took us a lot of effort to get it where it is now. These hillsides are somewhat special. First of all, they are shielded from the north by the Carpathian Mountains. Second, the mountains here from another chain of mountains surrounding the vineyards as well as the town of Berehovo. As I understand it, this is the main climate pattern of Berehovo. As I understand, this is the main climate pattern of Berehovo, which, as we all know, is one of the warmest places in Ukraine. Yes, it is. And it is also believed to be one of the warmest places in Transcarpathia, as well as the best place for growing grapes. We have put 60 hectares of surface area solely under well-known European grape varieties, such as Sauvignon Blanc, Italian Riesling, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, 
Pinot Noir. I thought that Consulpathia was a region associated with white wines. The number of sunny days here, though, suggests that it should be possible to also make red wines. Actually, the history of Transcarpathia is a very long one. It goes way back to the 13th century. Transcarpathia used to be most notably famous for its white wines. But as they say, science doesn't stay still, and viticulturists have been producing special clones that are more appropriate for the local conditions. The local terroir, local climate, yes. And this allows us to make fabulous classic white wines, as well as marvelous European red wines. By the way, I took two sharply different looking leaves, and it's obvious that they're from two different grape varieties. There's a science behind that called embolography, if I'm not mistaken. Really interesting. Yeah, that's one tough science. We often challenge each other's knowledge of grape varieties just for fun. Wow, cool. This is the game we play. Beragave is almost a thousand years old, but the town is really useful and dynamic. If all of the world's roads lead to Rome, then every road in western Ukraine leads to Beragave. See, there are six checkpoints. Which means welcome to Berugove. Here we used a classic European planting technique, which is two and a half meters by one. It allows every grape wine to receive just enough moisture and nutrients. I take it that the whole process is done by hand. The processes involving handling of grape wines are mostly done by hand. Harvesting is also done strictly by hand. A harvester picks a wine and gently puts each cluster of grapes in a box. Grape varieties were specifically selected in such a manner so that they don't get ripe all at once. As you probably understand, it would be extremely difficult to gather the crops all at once by hand, considering the size of the surface area. One more thing about the temperature. It allows us to harvest the grapes later than usual. This is how we make our famous wine called Carpathian Rose. Ah, that's a legendary wine of the Soviet era. It is made from a grape variety called Rote Traminer, for which the local conditions are ideal. To make sure that the wines we make are delicious and fragrant, prune the bunches. Yeah, prune on a vine, immediately after flowering. Again by hand, yeah. As the saying goes, a vine maker must kneel before a grapevine five times in a year. Shall we go and try finding a true homebrew wine? I'm not going in there. Have completed a home defense course. Oh dear. Oh dear. Is anybody home? We are not going in there, or else we'll get eaten. Let's keep going. I do want to taste some homebrew wine, don't you? Here is another very neat front yard. There are roses, and everything is so tidy. There is even a tiny doorbell, and there is no dog. Let's try and ask for some wine. You know how they say, please give me some water, for I have nowhere to lay my head. No luck. Let's try again. It's Monday, a working day. Everyone is at work and we need some wine. Come on, let's keep going. We are going to a real winery. Here we shall see where grapes are made into wine and how wine is aged, stored and bottled. But first things first. Before a bottle of wine ends up on a kitchen table, it goes a very long way. One of the initial production processes happens in a place like this. 
Grapes are shipped here, grape berries are separated from the cluster stems and placed under the press, and then the juice is extracted and poured into these tanks where the fermentation process takes place. These tanks have double walls, the temperature is controlled automatically. That's why the same tanks can be used for making both white and red wines. Wow, there's quite a lot of wine in here. By quite a lot, I mean approximately 50,000 liters. Enough for a whole town, because 50,000 is almost 70,000 bottles. When walking around the town, I wasn't expecting to see such a combination of state-of-the-art production with nature. Just a glass of homebrew wine. Nothing like these gigantic tanks. Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Look, I'm not going in there. There is a dog over there. I'm going in quietly, and if he attacks me, I'm closing the door and I'm at there. Good afternoon. Do you speak Ukrainian? No. How come? Russian? Hungarian. Hungarian? Yeah. But do you understand what I'm Not saying? Not really. If I speak slowly... Can you speak Russian? I can. Should I speak Russian? Russian, yes. Do you make homebrew wine? No. How come? How would I? Not a glass of wine. I don't. Even a small one? <laughs> Not a drop. Who might have some then? Third house. And what's your name? Sasha. Sasha, how come you don't speak Ukrainian, only Hungarian? <laughs> well, I once served in the Soviet Army. Which corps? Air Defense Artillery. So you are the man? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Why you are still the man? Too bad you don't have any wine. I don't. Thank you for not letting the dog loose. Let's go find the third house. Do you have any wine? Yeah, you can say some. I'd love to. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Just hold your dog back. <laughs> Quiet. Shut up. Please pour some wine. Here is a little. What kind of wine is it? Red? Red. Sweet? Is it sweet? Don't pour too much. Who is this for? This will be for the cameraman, this is for you. What's your name? Let Ukraine know. Gezo. Gezo? Okay, hold it like this. Let's do it. Here is to you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Do I have to drink it up or not? Yeah. Okay, goodbye, folks. Goodbye. You know, it's really good. It's not sweet at all. It's not. Is this Isabella? Sort of. Half and half. Do you make a lot of wine like this? 100 to 150 liters. A year? Yeah. Is that much or not? Not much. Really? Some people make 600, 700, or 1,000. The Yanish family are very generous people. You can simply come and ask for some wine and you'll get it. Remember the flawless vineyard that we saw this morning? Now here is the secret. Look at this fine tractor. By the way, it was made by New Holland. It's like the Rolls-Royce of all tractors. But the main feature of this tractor is this unit at the back of it. What's special about it is that instead of planting grapevines by hand, this thing uses a laser pointer and a GPS navigator. The system is plain simple. First you take a grapevine, put it here, then down here, wrap it around. In this manner you can plant from 8 to 10 hectares of surface area with grapes a day. Believe me, that's a huge area.
After 15 minute ride through marvelous landscapes, we arrived here near the magnificent Mukachevo Castle. Every wine has a love story. The love story of Chizai wine rests behind these ancient thick walls. All kinds of secrets, legends and ghosts await us inside the Palana Castle. The Palana Castle is not a glamorous palace, it's a fortress. Each of its owners would try to make it an unassailable citadel. But as we all know, true love knows no boundaries. Here is a true story. There was Count Azulona Zrini, 36, Imre Kale, Prince of Transylvania, 25. A war was raging. Her brother was captured by the rebels. She had negotiations with rebel leader Imre. Glasses of wine were raised, and there it was love. It was this very courtyard of the Palana Castle where Ilona and Imre had their wedding. I imagined this. Tables all around, torchlights are burning, music is playing, wine is flowing like water. 131 barrels of red wine and as many of white wine were consumed. That was quite some wedding. They used to make niches like this in castles to eavesdrop. Hence the saying that walls have ears. You will probably think that a traditional wine cellar looks like this. That's right. However, a modern winery looks dramatically different. A modern wine cellar looks like a spacecraft. These gigantic tanks can hold as much as two and a half million liters of wine. They are animaled on the inside, thus making them environmentally perfect. This is a wine fermentation tank. It is made of stainless steel. It has double walls for temperature control. Each tank has its own log sheet, indicating year of harvest, name of wine, grape variety, as well as some technical information. You can store wine for as long as several months. classic wine cellar. These old barrels are used for aging the wines intended for special occasions. By the way, these can hold the wine for as long as several years. It is quite chill in here, at approximately 11, 12 degrees centigrade. However, this temperature, ideal for storing wine, is maintained here at all times. It's not hard to imagine Ilona looking out from that very window, enjoying the view and dreaming of love. A few more words about the history of Chizai wine. By the way, Transcarpathians have two theories on the origin. According to one, Chizai means bird bubble in Hungarian. According to the other, Chizai was the name of the winemaker who planted the first vineyards in the area. These days, Chizai wines are bottled like this. Here they are stored and then shipped all across Ukraine and entire world. When you walk down a very dark hallway like this, you may feel the breath of ghosts on the back of your neck. Alex? Goodbye.
Well, thanks for letting us inside the castle. Are you cold? A little. The wind is so gusty here. Where do you think you are? In Miami? Have you seen the ghost? In a castle? I would say they haven't. I see, thanks. And what's your name? Anton. Thanks. Wait, we do have a ghost. Larissa, where are you? Larissa, that's me. Larissa. Here. Oh my god, that's a black cat. Let me hold it. Good kitty. At last, Vitaly has asked me out. Where you might ask? It's neither a theater, no movies, nor a restaurant. Today, he has asked me out to a museum. So there. Look, first I was upset, I mean, why the museum? But now I love it. Why, it's a museum of wine. Imagine how people loved wine that made scenes like this. It's just overkill. And if that weren't enough, there are some crazy exhibits here. I'm guessing the things over there was used to kill bugs. Let's take a look. Could be bugs. We could use it as a vaporizer when ironing clothes. Aren't you scared? Seriously, in the old times, what was it used for? Well, actually, I may have used some natural substances to kill parasites. What surprises me most is the material it's made of. Pure brass, almost indestructible. Is it expensive? By today's standards, it is. How much, roughly? Can I take it with me? Then I'd be stuck in here slaving for the rest of my life. Please don't. <laughs> okay, put it back. Wow, look at that awesome syringe. This was the last kind of tool we used to try and kill the phylloxera. There was once a time in our part of Europe when all the grape wines were dying off. This was the method they used, thinking that if they injected the root system, then the lice would die. But that didn't help. It didn't, did it? No, nothing helped. Nothing but vaccination. Look, here is another instrument of torture. Is this a press? Yes, it is. Uh, it was used to extract juice from grapes. You see, it's always been used for that same purpose. Uh, from the other side. It's so big. Stick it in there? Well, it's the way of nature. You have to stick something inside something else for some result. Look, what a cute bucket. Okay, this is a nice one. You could say it's a small bucket, but it's also a pretty cool backpack. Let me try it on. Hungarians call this thing Putanish. As a matter of fact, to this day... I feel like slave is Zaura. As a matter of fact, this is used for measuring, but we'll get to that a little later. I think this thing should be used to treat scoliosis. Let me help you. A slave indeed. How many kilos of grapes can this thing hold? About 20. Hey, we can always heap more on the top. Thanks, no thanks. You put it on now. I want to see it on you. Who usually carried this? Men or women? Uh, women, right? Those who had nothing better to do. Okay. Women, then. It looks great. I like it, too. You could even carry children in it. Really? That's an option. You know what's so special about it? I've gathered some grapes and here's a barrel. Just bend over, dump it all in there. I wouldn't have to take it off time after time. So you carried this hunk of wood on your back all day? Okay, put it back. Okay, I got it. And where exactly do I stick my finger here? I'd better stick your head in it. So is it like a press and a guillotine combined? Yeah. See, judging by the logos, it's Hungarian. Again, nothing has changed much since then, except the size and efficiency in liters of juice extracted. There is a map behind you. It must be something very special. The map is indeed unique. It shows the entire Austro-Hungary. However, this is not your typical political geographic map. This is a wine map. Here, barracks us. Here it is. Mukacha was a little bit to the north, Ungvar or Ruzhorod. Basically, this is part of the Zakarpatia region of modern-day Ukraine. I can't help but take the opportunity to try and get inside this age-old barrel and stomp imaginary grapes with my feet. I had tried. May I? Do I have to take my shoes off? Yes. Okay. 
There you go. This is how women, I suppose it was women, usually stomp in the grapes. Or was it men? That would make it more interesting for men, at least. All right, let me give you a hand. Okay. Please, make sure that I look graceful on the screen. Oh, awesome. Wait, I'm going to fall. It's pretty deep. Wow, it is deep. And they were usually walking around in circles inside the barrel. Yeah, that's right. And they were doing some kind of dance. To make it more fun. In fact, why stomp? Any of the presses could easily squash the grape seeds. And the seeds have tannin inside of them, which tastes... Uh, bad. It heavily affects the taste, and when you stomp the grapes barefoot, you're not going to squash the seeds, making for a tremendous quality wine. What about sanitary considerations? Did they wash their feet? First off, they did. Second, bear in mind that the wine would then referment in a way. Plus, there's alcohol, which was a natural disinfection. What about the women's hairs that might have been falling out? Excuse me, braided or not? How about that? After a while, the wine would settle and eventually become crystal clear. And how long did they have to dance inside the barrel? It would depend on how many women they were dancing. And how many could possibly fit in here? <laughs> that would be up to the winemaker. I wonder if only the beautiful women were doing this, or it didn't matter. <laughs> did they have to be young? No, wait, did they have to be married or unmarried? I see that's a tough question. Are there still any places today where people stomp grapes? These days are just tradition. It's usually done for... A show. People usually do this at festivals or shows. And by the way, I would like to point out that when I tried doing it myself, it was incredibly... Painful. Unpleasant. Yeah, it was very enjoyable. It's hard to describe. I never thought it would make me feel like that. And I would have never believed it if somebody told me when you stomp grapes, the sensations and emotions you get are unparalleled. So you did try stomping yeah. grapes? Near Odessa, it was white grapes. You know, I think it would be cool if wine bottles carried a label. This wine was made from the grapes stomped by beautiful women's feet. The prices would go through the roof. With a picture of the actual woman who stomped the grapes on the label. Wearing a swimsuit. <laughs> Size of the label permitting. I think it's time to get ready for the wine testing. Yeah, because... I'm sure you have already chosen some wine. Yeah, I've chosen a few wine samples. I'm going to change for the evening. Let me give you a hand. to spend the whole day talking about wine, thinking about wine, asking questions about wine, and not have a drink of wine is simply unbearable. The wine tasting is about to begin. Let's go. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see that Vitaly got everything ready for wine tasting. It looks very nice. Wow, where do we start? This is white wine, and it should become clear right away that it has a flavor. No, you tell me. What is it? I don't know, some kind of herb? It's a flower. A flower? This must be... I know, it's a rose. A bottle of wine must be served chilled. Do all sommeliers do this? Ideally. The corkscrew is talking to us. Talking? Are these some special glasses? These are white wine glasses. I'm scared to touch them. No, no, don't be. Hold it at the stem. The stem? By no means don't you hold it at the bowl. Enough? Flavor of a rose. Yes, it is. Here's a small vase, but you do not put flowers in it. A sommelier cannot take the liberty to swallow the wine. I can. When it comes to low-alcohol white wines, or everyday wines, they're best served chilled at 8 degrees Celsius. Now, the wines that have been aged in oak barrels, which is a whole another level. Those are the wines that... Sweet? High alcohol? Not necessarily sweet, not necessarily high alcohol, they're just more concentrated. These are best served at a higher temperature, such as 10 to 12 degrees. What are these for bottles? 
These are best wines made by our today's winemaker, which we have cherry-picked and can recommend to anyone. The next bottle we are going to uncork is a rosé. It's a wine that you buy for your girlfriend. If someone brings you a bottle of wine like this, it means it's a date, just so you know. If you can go a romantic date, pink wine is exactly what you need. Otherwise, if you merely want to... Want what? Get drunk? <laughs> I don't think some of us get drunk, ever. Have you ever been really dead drunk yourself? I had to admit it, but I have. I haven't drunk vodka ever since. The scent seems so familiar. It's aro... Aroma. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. But it's color, since we're talking about rosé. It must be strawberry. Bravo. I got it right again. Do we need clean glasses again? We can use the same glasses, just have to empty them. The aroma is second to none, classy. All right, folks. Now I need to take a sit. Let me forget to spit out my wine, too. I just can't help it. Vitaly, please teach me how to spit properly, or I, I'm not going to make it until we get to the fourth bottle. Okay, drink. Take a sip that's quite... A big? Yeah, quite a big one. Don't swallow or... I'm sorry. You're not gonna learn how to do it. Now I take a mouthful of wine and swirl it around my mouth cavity, as a sommelier would say. Swirl it gently so that you don't... Spit out? Swallow it. What? Swallow it? If anyone is getting drunk here, it's not me. After we have swirled it long enough... When it starts to feel superfluous, you simply spit it out. I'll try doing it, and you'll tell me whether it's right or not. Okay, I'd be just watching, because I've had enough spitting. Attention, Larissa Gubina will now be spitting out wine. <laughs> That's a false start. Now swallow. Spitting is the knot in itself, isn't it? Tell me more. The real skill is spitting right into a bucket, uh, standing a meter and a half away. By the way, we have all but forgotten to talk about the color. Right. You have to have something as a white background and lean your glass against it. See how beautiful, vibrant and colorful it is. You drink pink wines while they're young. Two years all tops. Then it gets too old to drink? As it gets older, pink wine that is three to four years old begins to change its color toward brick red. And the aroma takes on a sort of a seasoned strawberry flavor. Can I have some cheese in between tasting these two wines? Because I'm starting to feel a little... What is the right time to do this anyway? Different cheeses go with different wines. But today we chose a cheese that goes equally well with either white wine or rosé. This is the cheese, and I'm going to eat it. Okay, I've eaten this cheese. Well, the third wine. Do I sniff it or drink it? First sniff it. Sniff it. Okay. My God, this smells like shoes. Give me the cap, please. Reminds me of something else. Childhood memories. So I wasn't that far off then? No, no, this would be something green. Green shoes? Do say it. Bell pepper. No way, in a red cabernet. Pour it in. For this wine, we need different glasses. Big ones? Are you going to pour more wine than usual? We're going to drink more. We are going to drink more? Why do we need different glasses for red wine? I tell you, you're going to start trolling me again. Professional talk again? It contains some dense flavoring substances, which means that it needs more oxygen. A larger glass and a higher temperature because you don't serve red wine at a temperature of 10 degrees. Young wines are best served at 16 or 18 degrees. This is so gorgeous, so sparkly, like poetry. Look, just wow. Why is the color black current? It's ruby red. Yes, ruby red. It's probably the perfect wine to drink in the summer. You mean it's a summer wine? It's not really a summer wine, but it goes very well with barbecue. You know, I wanted to drink this really, but to be able to fully enjoy the next wine, I'm going to give this one to our director. Let's do it. It'll make it easier for us. Enjoy, my friend. This is one of the best sweet wines of the Soviet era. Mm -hmm. That's a premium wine, which means that it has been additionally aged for two years in oak barrels. I suppose it is concentrated. 
It is very concentrated aromas. It's sweet. It's a sweet variety, once again, made from the Tremener variety of grapes, specifically Rotor Tremener. It looks like honey. Yes, it has the color of honey indeed. How do you like the aroma of fresh sniff? So airy. So what do you say? My head just stopped beating. <laughs> no, wine is actually very selfish. What do you mean? As soon as we pour the wine into our glasses, we can talk about anything else but it. When the viewers tune into our program, they cannot think about anything else but the two of us and the wine. We are selfish too. I hope this is not the last time we meet. Of course not. After all, this program is called the World's Wine Map. We'll meet again in Europe. Europe is a fabulous place.